Bar Bel Air in West Philadelphia. Born and raised on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, and, some, and shooting, shooting some, some b-ball, b-ball outside, outside of, of school. school. When, when a couple, couple of guys said I'm up to no, no good. good, started making trouble in my neighborhood. I, I got, got in one, one little fight, fight and my mom, mom got scared. scared. She, she said, I'm moving with your auntie and uncle, uncle Belly. I whistled for a cab, and when it came near, the license plate said fresh, there were dice in the, the mirror. mirror. If anything, I, I could say, say that this cab was rare, rare. but I thought, yeah. now nah, yo, forget yeah. it, yo home to Bel Air. Bum, 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 Pulled up to a house about seven or eight. Now yell yeah, to, to the cabbie, cabbie yo, homie, smell, smell you later. <laughs> Looked at my kingdom, I was finally there. Now I can sit on my throne, I'm the, the Prince of Bel Air. Good times. Yeah. Good times back in the 90s when we were... I was we actually more recording. street than we are now. Like yeah, I went we really were doing our, class our come one two one two mic check one two one two. <laughs> I thought we'd give it like five seconds of silence just so it's completely redundant at this point because like, we've already started. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure, the moment sure. silence is uh, it's it's like V day every time I start a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Minute silence. It's just uh, to prevent any momentum, momentum building up, so you yeah, can't actually make get the anything worse. Right. It's all about getting the levels right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, it's good to have you on the show again, man. Cheers, man. With, yeah. uh, That's about the most official I want to make it this today, because yeah, yeah. I was like busting my ass on that review all day, and I'm just Be- like, better than Better than, we're glad to have yeah. you on the show again. Yeah, we're glad. We, <laughs> we, the collective, we, me and my invisible imaginary producers are yeah. glad that you, you could come on the show again. Come well, all over well, the, the show. The, the like the various forms of Lewis that you talk through the creative process with when you're like making <laughs> yeah. a review or yeah, something. Like yeah, I can I consult <laughs> with myself. Yeah. Uh, I know that feel. Yeah, I know I know your feels. <laughs> mm. You know, I thought we could talk about pedophiles. Sure. Um Where do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, like, well we could start with our own like primary school education. And there was always a couple. And then the pedophiles became progressively more menacing or I don't know if they became more menacing or more comical like the pedophiles at primary school it wasn't even it was like some no feeling nine like child line bullshit mm. then it got to high school and there was the danger that they might actually try and fuck you yeah, yeah. and even in second year you didn't fully understand what that meant but you knew that there was something up with Mr. Brown was it the geography joke, he knew what? his way around the, this, he this knew one. his way around it was perfect the inherent within his lost, lost. a bit of vaginal orienteering was factually accurate, this might be libelous. <laughs> yeah. The new press laws actually prohibit us from making any further comment about Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. B. <laughs> Mr. B. Mr. B on the D. <laughs> no, that guy was weird. Yeah. With a capital... W. No, I was gonna... Uh, uh, well, weird with a capital... P for penetration. I, I don't even know where I was going with that, but it wasn't anywhere good. <laughs> Operation U Tree. <laughs> Who's it we thought earlier? Uh, who hasn't been snared with it yet? I reckon the bookies are going to be taking bets on this sometime oh, soon. Uh, you Justin Lee Collins. Justin Lee Collins. See, I think he's yeah. too young to be in that. You're never too young to fuck kids. <laughs> even kids <laughs> fuck kids. I know. I that's a, that. that's I a common refrain from the older generation. There's kids having kids. Hmm. Uh, having doesn't necessarily mean pregnancy. It's like but you is mean having tree, kids. You tree not more focused around the kind of. It's focused on like the culture of the BBC. It's basically a war on everyone's childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a Do war you have on some everyone's sacred childhood. Memory. That's what that guy molested yeah, kids. Operation U tree is like an old pagan reference from prehistory, and U tree just means innocence. Like <laughs> Operation Innocence, but in this sense, it's both defending the Metropolitan Police, both defending and destroying your childhood. You know, the last scrap. I, mean, I just, I love, um, to be fair, of, of all the places that you could be molested, you know, the, the back, backstage at Top of the Pops is not bad. <laughs> if someone said, like, you have, it has to happen, he's approaching now, uh... You know, that's he hasn't just washed his hands, that's lubricant. It's top of the pops, nineteen seventy eight or what the whatever the fuck. Um this is the day, this is the time that you're gonna be fucked by 
Jimmy Savile or something. To my knowledge, Jimmy Savile didn't fuck them. Like, he seemed to be interested in everything aside from fucking them, was he not? I really don't know. I know he had a thing for dead people. Yeah, he was which like, like from Necrophilia. Cast. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, keys to Broadmoor. It's going to go down in history. Yeah, that man, that's... Yeah, he's like the, the actual Joker. You ever notice that? He's yeah. like the Joker of showbiz. Mm. You know? It's, it's, it's crazy. It's the, the fact that it's like charitable status or status where I don't know how you pronounce it um, like the the fact that he gifted lots of money to various hospitals and charities like gifted gave lots him of money this, shots like, yeah like unimpeachable uh, right to yeah. like access these areas and well why would anyone question Jimmy Savile he's a massive fundraiser and mm. he's a good guy well, we literally talked about Savile two Halloweens ago yeah on Hallow- on the on the first and now actually for the time being only Hallow Castle she's told bring that show back yeah um like it's just this annual one off special it's like getting one of those oversized beanos you know yeah. <laughs> it's full of filth like <laughs> more filth than the beano but like yeah that this has been a constant thing for like two years now mm. just Jimmy Savile yeah and uh, like I think. Uh, he seems like the most prolific, if you can say that, but it seems like it was something that was culturally just about at that time, like, what, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and uh, not just the BBC, but, like, kind of media organisations and anyone with kind of free access to children, obviously, would be fucking engaged. Yeah, it's like if you've got got lubricant caffeine tablets and, like, whatever the... What's the dick hard stuff again? Viagra? Viagra, yeah. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. It's like written in every every medicine cabinet in my house. <laughs> no, like um, if you've got those three ingredients, I mean that's like the Harry Potter thing. That's all you need to you know make a Horcrux. Yeah. You know if you if you've got those three ingredients, you're set. A bit of willpower, access all areas on the staff, the locations. You know you got your victims lined up. Uh, and Laurie's currently searching something at the moment. What are you searching, Laurie? Interest to whom? To everyone. No. Not the nine o'clock news. So considering we're on the discussion, I'll just give a wee bit of introduction here. Uh, I'm sure you can edit it properly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can actually include this video, or you might just want to have a link to the it. BBC. Will probably. I was going to say the BBC will rate me, although that's actually well, they're, they're that's actually a rate realistic. Rate the laughter vault first, but um, yeah, yeah uh, this is like a, a sketch that was actually uh, banned, apparently. Or like, or was prepared from being shown in the nineteen eighties. Um, although that said, I mean that's based on what someone's told me. Yeah. So I wasn't born in nineteen eighty. So they prevented so no it way from of, being shown. Uh, or it was maybe an editorial decision yeah. was taken that it would be taken out of th- the but laughter th- vault. The fact is that no one stopped them discussing it, recording it, producing it. Yeah. So it maybe isn't as uh, kind of clandestine the cover up as yeah. uh, you maybe want to think it is mm. but the fact that this was even created it's almost like one of these things that like maybe it was a, even a rumour at the time or something like that but um, yeah I, I, I think it's, it's kind of interesting and funny to see like with the power of hindsight yeah kind of like I actually watched the Louis Theroux documentary on Jimmy Savile yeah, and when it was he fascinating him, he's, in his he's like I'm not into boys I'm not into girls yeah you know he had some like weird like um, he had some weird like vague shit that he was saying that just sounded a little bit and sketchy. And he has, this is my friend. And he had a couple of friends, like one when he was up north and one when he was on, going on some yeah. boat journey and things like that. And they are, like, I don't want to sound like I'm being, uh, st- like, stereotyping people, yeah. but, like, classic case pedophiles. Yeah. Like, they losing look, hair, a bit of bill. a comb over, yeah. these kind of creepy glasses and a big anorak mm. and things like that. Like, if you saw that man in the street, you'd just be like, yeah, he rapes kids. Or yeah. he's, he at least is interested in the raping of children. Exactly, like, yeah. So th- like, like these the were trench these coat, the yeah. thick horn-rimmed glasses. Weirdly, a lot of that trope photo, looks a lot like Ted Bundy. Lens camera. Kind of, yeah. Uh, no, what was it called? Yeah, like like a single lens reflex, like the old snappers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like that, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, gobstoppers. But, um, As in, they'll hold their hand over your mouth. <laughs> so you can't get to your rape whistle. <laughs> but but um, th- those are the kind of people that you fraternise with. And yeah. in, in that documentary, and I was like, and then there was that bit where uh, the cameraman stayed up filming Jimmy Savile after he had a few drinks, like when they were staying at his house, with, and Louis had like gone off. And um, 
just like he's like telling the story about how he'd like treat people in the 1950s like underage girls that went to his disco and things like that and saying oh it's better i do this to them than blah 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 and it like it was creepy it was like the fact that you're actually like watching that after all these revelations came out i was watching it thinking i don't know how this wasn't uncovered before like this was obviously known to a wide number of people yeah. so how is it how is it a national um like uh what do you call it? what's what's the word like, like, scandal yeah Fucking like a scandal like, yeah. yeah it was a national scandal yet it was widely known to a large number of people or it must have been yeah there's no way and it, it seems wasn't. to be like some vast I mean, institutional it. conspiracy like like i was saying earlier about childhoods like your childhood was like this weird like, it was like this pop culture engineered kid fucking mm. machine like the whole thing like like insane numbers of prominent people from like sports reporters mm. to freaking DJs on the regular radio playing pop songs pop records to guys doing the nightly well maybe not the nightly news but I mean there have even been some cases weirdly it seems to have avoided been avoided by actual comedians like stand up comedians I think my theory on that that's is that stand up comedians are already quite weird neurotic yeah I was going to say that yeah the stand up comedians are already broken yeah. people so and they got deal in stereotypes yeah, and yeah. the idea of being someone who abuses their power is ironically part of their job but at the same time something that they probably use as a topic of humour which is yeah. something they just wouldn't be into whereas these more kind of um, you know guys that are kind of cheese poppy culture mm. it's saturday night you know and welcome yeah, yeah. to top of the pops the, the whole kind of the whole kind of whiter than white family yeah image the kind guys of that almost, are cleanest yeah. are dirtiest and that's yeah. the weirdest thing you know that's the thing like i think uh, like a comedian like frank boyle or jimmy carr is far more likely to make a joke about child rape or something like that yeah i'd say that they're far less likely to do it than yeah. uh, some of these guys that are like wholesome kids entertainers exactly and i like mean that. you remember yeah. about 2012 i think it was that this huge scandal, it was like, Jimmy Carr has avoided tax. Mm. And I think this was just before you, Tree. I could be wrong. It def- I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before with Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Carr. Good and um, he must be feeling pretty good right now. Because it was like, oh, you're a public entertainer. You're avoiding your fucking taxes. But compared <laughs> to Savile, holy shit, you know. Well, anyway. Yeah. Do you want, uh, do you want to play f- this clip? Yeah, I'll play, I'll play this clip and just see what you think. You might find it hard to get audio on it. All right, here it comes. Griff Reese Jones right there. I have no idea if the audience can actually hear it at this level. Yeah. You can edit it out. Yeah. He's heard in these little motherfuckers yeah. with fucking nets. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like with fishing nets. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. It's, it's, it was a kind of country western tune that was playing in the background that made yeah. it even worse because it was just it's supposed to be like buffalo herd and ding 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 ding, yeah. ding, ding yeah. but it's, I get, to me it's like the I, I mean I'm sure that other people have done sketches on like similar guys that have been caught yeah. up in this YouTube thing but it's like did they like uh, it's not that they knew something and they were like this is the this is the secret way to disseminate information through <laughs> like you know kind of covert videos and like si- silently making a joke yeah. about them being pedophiles I think it's like, like if you play if you play one of S- Ralph Harris's pop songs backwards it's just like he's fucking kids <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. fucking kids but, or um, is the didgeridoo like you know a whole sort of uh, metaphor for, yeah, yeah, people symbol- just like, yeah. look at the didgeridoo it represents the phallus <laughs> <laughs> but um 
Yeah, is it that? Is it this like kind of mm-hmm. and the conspiracy? wholeness of the, the didgeridoo the, the, represents the, the, Ralph Harris's heart? Yeah, the the audience, uh, sorry, the creators of like not the nine o'clock news thought, what's the best way to like let the public know that Ralph Harris is actually a paedophile? I know, we'll like do a sketch at the end of an episode yeah. to like confirm it. Or is it that this mm. was maybe a rumor that was circulating that had been circulating yeah. for twenty Did you years? You hear about the Vina, the, the Vina McCall thing? The chick that used to do fucking yeah, Big yeah. Brother. I've, and I, I never I've not actually... Heard of, I've not heard this story. I think there was a couple of summers, because so I think it's probably on right now. No one actually right. gives a shit about Big Brother anymore for the most Channel part. Channel 5 did not Yeah, to, and yeah. when Channel 5 have it, you know, that, watching some dude getting wanked off in the shower room by, like, you know, uh, by, like, a Brazilian transvestite. Speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, like, no, no, uh, no, no insult intended, but it's always some very... Um, I get you, I get you. It's, it's yeah, always yeah. some very choice shit going on. Like, it's always some, mm. like, it's always got, weirdly, the perfect balance of different ethnicities and sexualities and worldviews. Like, uh, like you know, I'm surprised you know George Galloway wasn't getting... It's because they have producers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And it's, um, you know, it's always shit like that. But uh, Davina McCall, that used to host that show... Um. But yeah, so it's that in conjunction with Law and Order is the most egregious part of it. I'm just like, mm. okay, so you have this and then a show about crime, unironically. Uh, uh, but yeah, Davina McCall, who hosted it for years, I don't know if she still does, uh, and, she, and I saw the video. Basically, she had this thing with Rolf Harris, like not a thing, but she had like a, an interview thing on like GMTV or some crap right. uh, breakfast show or something in the 90s. Um, and she said that she gave an interview cut to ad break and he's just got his hands down her fucking pants like insta really? fondle fucking like, hell insta like meta fondle like he had that and then <laughs> he was fondle. at the same time he was molesting the set hands he'd like built some contraption that allowed him to be like, to break through the fabric of space time and molest people in multiple <laughs> locations at the same time that's how I, I justified the word meta which probably shouldn't yeah, have been yeah, used yeah. in that context but he has super alien technology allowing him to fuck the kitties he's going to be in Peru right now he's oh, he's, rot- he's rotting in prison no he's not yeah. he's everywhere and he's it's nowhere like, he's it's fucking like, Rolf Harris it's like law-abiding right? citizen Rolf Harris yeah. is in prison because that's exactly where Rolf wants yeah. to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah playing right into Rolf's hands <laughs> Um, meanwhile, his hands are playing right into your daughter's pants. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> it's like, when you, when you think that Rolf is playing right into your hands, you forget that Rolf has more than two hands. <laughs> you know, um, he has a potentially, mathematically, he's like the Q continuum in Star Trek. He has a potentially infinite number of hands that can be in multiple places at once. Yeah. But like, um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, Rolf Harris occupying space time and the mi- and the nightmares of your children since 1967. You know, just like <laughs> that's, that's the jingle. But like, uh, she creating said, dreams and shattering them with yeah, fingering. <laughs> exactly. But she was in like her late thirties when this happened. Yeah, he wasn't like a kitty fiddler exclusively. He's just he a, was just a fucking grabber. Guess where my hands yeah. are, bitch. You know, like some really weird shit going See, on. See, I, I, I find that hard to comprehend the idea that these guys would firstly do that kind of shit but the fact that it doesn't catch up with them or the f- yeah. or they took what two three decades for it to catch up with them like that that makes no sense to me whatsoever mm. that no one brought them to uh, account for what they've done mm. uh, or like you know was it covered up with people disbelieve but things like that like groping even just fully yeah. grown adult women. who was the guy like, that was like we won't bring it up now Duran Duran are on on Sunday night like you know Top of the Pops is like doing oh, well it's yeah. like oh, we can't touch Jimmy you yeah know? yeah <laughs> uh, it's insane but it's Jimmy like, can touch you <laughs> yeah was it isn't it like a Dr. Dre line where it's just like uh, you make another joke about you Jimmy and he's talking about dicks it's just Jimmy Savile of all the fucking names also I mean he sounds like the kind of dude you would run into in Malaga you know like the kind of guys like you know I'm from Durham and I've lived here for 30 years in my caravan with my wife who may or may not be related to me it's unconfirmed my kids sit upstairs in our pub and play computer games and like attack anyone that enters the room you know you're made to play with them while your parents sit downstairs and drink fucking sangrita which I don't know of any human I have to say it like a cunt it's like sangrita like um, you want some sangrita there lad you want some sangrita I'll touch your cock You'll drink the sangrita, you'll fall asleep, you'll wake up, I'll be inside you, lad. 
you know, but, uh, you know. That's uh, <laughs> disturbing, man. Can't a good, honest fucking man find a fuck at a service station? I were cruising around for hours on the A76, which is probably nowhere near Manchester. <laughs> the person who's impersonating my accent has no intimate knowledge of West Yorkshire's transportation system or network, so for the time being, we'll say the A87. I'm cruising around the A87 looking for a fuck. Uh, I found now, so I got on plane, went to went to Mallorca, got a young lad some sangria. Sang- <laughs> it's an even more fucked up pronunciation. <laughs> got a young lad some sangria, touched his cock, got to three in tip morning. The job was done. <laughs> that is essentially the history of the BBC for the last thirty years. Yeah, I'm glad I could outline be- that for you. <laughs> Never mind the fucking panoramas. Yeah. The- uh, Did they have panoramas before about this stuff? Well, on, probably not. Yeah. It must have been like seventy. It would have been that shortly in nineteen sixties, like when newsreaders were a lot more polite. Yeah. I think that was like one of the best things I ever. Like even as a kid grew up, I always thought that panorama was like a fucking brilliant show. Alex. Yeah. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been fascinated by documentaries and just yeah. the kind of pursuit of knowledge that has no real application in your daily life. That's the only kind of knowledge that's worth having. <laughs> it's like, you didn't know about this yesterday, and now you're angry. Yeah. So, like, when my teacher's, like, asking me why I can't do my seven times table, I'm telling her some fascinating fact about, like, uh, how elements are produced in the sun. And yeah. Things like that, you know? Yeah. Like, as the fucking sun searches for ever, uh, expand, like, fuel uh, to consume... The, yeah. like with its with it its generates higher power, heat yeah. yeah and then it fuses different albums. like i was like i remember even being 10 and like yeah kind of getting that as like this is more interesting than any of the shit that i'm being presented with right now yeah and the the only subjects that i got engaged on were like things that were of real interest to me like i remember yeah. doing the jacobites and even that was like played as a scotland versus england thing which wasn't it wasn't the slightest yeah. but um i remember like p4 learning about the romans and the lack of depth that it went into, even mm. as like a what, what would I be, nine, ten years old? Yeah. Even at that age, it pissed me off. Yeah, well, the whole thing with the Romans, I remember, was. Um, I want to know more. Like, I want to know yeah. more about. And don't just tell me the cultural impact of what Rome had. Let's, right, we go and look at an old, like, a uh, fortification or castle or something like this existed since Roman times. That's fucking fascinating, the fact that that exists in or around Edinburgh. Cool. But. I want to. I want to know about battles. I want to know about timelines. I want to know how it fits together because yeah. what you're telling me is really sort of fractured pieces of information that I can kind of go at the age of like ten. Okay, there's ancient hi- so there's dinosaurs, ancient history, Jesus, Romans, yeah. or Romans. You know, like yeah. like. But in my head, it was probably like scattering. Actually, mm. at that age, maybe it would be Jesus before Romans yeah. in my mind. Um, and then you have. Medieval and then muskets and then today and yeah. that is like that is literally how history is taught to kids. Yeah, just well, like for for kids, history about the Renaissance is years just guns. Yeah, it's like the movie The Patriot. I mean, it's, yeah. it goes so much deeper than that. But like I, all I remember about the Romans was just roads, Hadrian's Wall. So they bit. So basically, they were like a construction firm. Like if you were a kid, that's <laughs> yeah. like what the Romans they built things. It's like why. I have. I don't really know about the context. No, they laid the foundations for civilization to flourish in these isles. Like that's the way I see it. Exactly. Like, um, yeah. Like primary school education is kind of fucked up. I mean, someone was saying the other day, it's like, uh, yeah, appeals to emotion with regard to children. We're talking about pedophiles, and people will be like, yeah, but for the kids, it's like, man, if you cared about the kids, the kids would leave school with marketable skills. Mm. They don't. Um, but I wanted to talk actually. About the uh, the Dota uh, internationals, yeah, uh, because I have such a breadth of knowledge on this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they're coming up, and um, I find it interesting that, like, you see, because I'm quite interested in the rise of alternative media. If you think about regular yeah, sport, yeah. like, so most people consume sports media; they don't actually consume sports. I mean, it's like they don't actually play sports. They yeah, may, they might when they're younger. But, you know, they don't. Or the, and I or find the, it interesting. That basically, the, the percentage of people watching a Premier League game on a Saturday evening or Saturday yeah. morning, you know, early afternoon kickoff, something yeah. like that, the percentage of those people that actually actively played a game of football that day is probably minuscule in terms of 
the yeah. number of people that watched like, it. Beyond minuscule, like an insane. But with Dota, it's kind of different in that only players will be interested in. Yeah. Or actually, it's the same with all esports. No one, no one really. Yeah. really pays deep interest to an esport that they don't already play that's what I mean even yeah. at an amateur level if, and that's why yeah. I think that it's going to grow exponentially even if you're not playing this particular game that you're watching or tournament that you're watching mm. you play which is not something that you can say for all sports in fact it's something you can say for very few sports maybe the closest that I could come to would be maybe like poker yeah yeah um Although, I mean, I don't know if you can bet on poker, like, as on competitive on poker TV, oh, like on, other people on are playing. So-and-so to win a hand, or yeah. so-and-so to win the entire... Yeah, externally on a poker match? You know what? I'm sure there's probably sites that would take yeah, that kind of bet. Yeah, I know that poker matches are, I mean, they are all about internal betting. It's not something, from yeah, other it's not something that I'm... F- I th- I, it's not something I'm aware of being available on kind of traditional uh, exchange betting sites and things like that, like Betfair or Bet365. Yeah. You would think it would be because um, if you if it, if there is logic to the game and it's not just luck. And the thing yeah. about poker is, um, you're not immune to bad luck or good luck. But then again, if you play football, I mean, we just watched that thing earlier with the ball coming so close to the fucking line with Holland Argentina. Yeah, it was a Ron um, Flores penalty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, that's down a lot. You can be the most talented player in the world. So, by that logic, I mean, poker is is a legitimate game that mm. is not purely founded on luck because the cards you are dealt oh, might be def- a variable. Definitely not, definitely not yeah. founded on luck. But in the same way that you, but, people say the cards but, you're dealt, you could be a great footballer, but it's, man, it's freezing cold on the pitch. There's so much you know? of it. So much of it comes down to mind games as well because you might actually have the better hand, but you don't know... Mm. Or you have to make... You you have to make a guess on the psychological uh, psycholo- psy- uh, psychology of the person yeah. you're playing against. So they you might be thinking, "Fuck this guy's," you know, he's continuously bidding me up. Now that could be because he's bluffing. He's got fuck all, and he wants to push me as far as I can go, and then get me to fold. Or maybe he's got a really good hand, and then I need to bottle out. Mm. Like this, the that, that's where I'm interested in is the the kind of psychology of poker, mm. and it's like working out what kind of person you're playing against, and working out yeah. what they're most likely to do in any given scenario. And mm. actually, it's similar to Dota in that sense that um, a lot of the things in Dota are based on skill shots, based on anticipation. Yeah. So it's working as a collective unit of five players and coming to a conclusion on what you believe your opponent is most likely to do in any given scenario. Yeah. And if you make that call right, whether it's bullshit or it's based on solid fact that you have, um, you make that call right or you make that call wrong, and it influences the next 30 seconds, uh, 10 minutes, half an hour yeah. of the game. And you can you can lose a game of Dota in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Like, you, you, you can lose the I game I find at that it point. interesting because it's sort of a... Well, it's sort of... Uh, um, MOBA games from the outside looking in I don't play them personally but MOBA games appear to me to be a sort of sh- not a stripped down form both a stripped down simplified form and actually a more complex form of real time strategy Yeah, where yeah, it's okay. a real time strategy game with sorry it's it's well, if it's two teams playing five apiece you said it's ten real time strategy games within one larger real-time strategy game. Yeah. It would be as if you played Command & Conquer and every Marine on the field was played by an individual person. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the weird thing for me that's quite mind-boggling is that you're watching an overall strategy, yet y- there's another element where you're trying to become intimately understanding of, of what each player, one mm. of ten, is um, all of ten, their individual strategy is so there's you know I don't I don't know the names for like a necromancer or some shit yeah, and yeah. their thing is that they cast you know all this kind of stuff spells or whatever and the other people are like they are aware of their own assets that they can bring to the table they're aware of the overall strategy mm. they're aware of the variables they're taking into account with regard to the weaknesses and strengths that they're aware of in the other team and of the map yeah um and all and and of the placement of the objectives and all that kind of stuff and of the points margin, maybe if that's applicable in a tournament, but also aware of the other individual player characters, what their strengths and weaknesses are, what their own exactly, yeah. teammates' strengths and weaknesses are. So I think when you go into it, it's almost a game you can watch football and maybe the offside rule is the classic one. You have to explain it. I do think that if for a non-player, well, they have a, they have an offside rule in Dota. Really, backdoor, backdoor. So explain basically. Like, I guess, if I can put it as simple as I can, the rules of Dota are that each team controls half the map 
in the sense that they have towers. You've got a top, middle and bottom lane, then you have a tier 1 tower, so the mo- outermost towers, 1, 2, 3, top, middle, bottom. Then you have the tier 2 towers, 1, 2, 3, top, middle and bottom. And then you have the inside the base, which is, I'd say, the, the kind of... Um, the kind of perimeter around the right angle of the top right and top left bottom corners of the map. Yeah. Where the Dire and Radiant, which are the two teams' mm. bases are. And then you have one, two, three towers there as well. And then behind the tier three towers are a melee racks and a ranged... Sorry, a melee barracks and a ranged barracks. Right. And these barracks produce uh, waves of computer controlled infantry yeah. that go out into battle and Called com- creeps, right? Creeps, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. And they combat the other team's infantry. Right, okay. And so, what, what is so their so ultimate... the also, So the Ossigrel yeah. thing I was getting at, um, basically, if you're sieging an enemy base, so you've taken Tier 1 and Tier 2 mm. towers within... Uh, or actually, it even applies to uh, outer towers as well. Yeah. Um, if you don't have any of your creeps pushing up that wave to attack that tower, yeah. If you or, or barracks, if you try and attack that barracks, uh, the barracks has a thing called backdoor regen, which means that if there's no creeps from your side of the map yeah. supporting your attack, you will not be able to damage that barracks right. unless you're dealing insane amounts of damage. Yeah. Uh, and that's very late on in the game that you Were can overcome. Were the creeps originally introduced to the game as a way to give it a sense of scale, as opposed to just ten people playing no, on a large map? No, uh, creeps, creeps are there to provide a uh, kind of I mean, golden they're NPCs, experience. They're, they're non-playable yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so the the creeps basically, if you left them to their own devices, fight an endless battle for control yeah. over. Their halves of the map. Right. Now, if uh, you have a hard lane and you have a easy lane, so yeah. like a strong lane, and a soft lane, if that makes sense. Um, uh, and for the radiant side, their strong lane is the bottom lane, and for the dire side, their strong lane is the top lane. So, if you let the creeps, the creep equilibrium, which is just the balance of play that yeah. the creeps maintain, in your strong lane, they're going to be stronger, if that makes sense, yeah. because uh, they're they have a shorter distance to cover to their tier one, mm. so eventually over the course of say t- five ten waves, the enemy creeps will be taking damage from your tier one tower, mm. and it will weaken their position, and then you can actually go on and push. So if you just left the lane to its own, your strong lane should win. Yeah, the creep your creep should be able to take the enemy tower yeah. over the course of 40 minutes, something like that. Yeah. But with human, or with player influence, mm. you can take that much quicker so, or you can prevent yeah. the enemy so, from taking it. So in a narrative, up. kind of back background sense, the creeps provide a context in which the heroes are having a confrontation. Yeah. So it's a little bit... And they also, know, and they also like Lord of the Rings, you have all these regular infantry guys, then you've got your Aragorn, and, you've got your heroes, and your yeah. fucking, yeah. you know, so and, your, and your Legolas, and your Gimli, and shit yeah. like that. And you also get a thing called creep score, which yeah. is the number of creeps that you've killed. And there's also neutral creeps that are present in both jungles, so the Radiant Jungle and the Dire Jungle. Yeah. And they're not allied to any faction, they hold to these little positions yeah. themselves, uh, just like a like a, a den kind of thing mm. for these these creeps. And killing them gives you experience and it gives mm. you gold. In the same way that like RPG role playing games give you experience and gold for yeah. killing. So what appears to have NPC happened characters. in the context? But of... but, they do, but the way it's done is it's done on a more concentrated basis mm. over a forty minutes. So wherever golden experience you gain in that forty minute game of Dota is not carried over into the next game of Dota. You start off again at level one, and it's the same map every time. But that's uh, that's the part of the fun of it. Right. It's the same situation. Sorry, it's the same environment with a unique situation each time. Yeah. That uh, is rare that you'll have all ten heroes picked the same again. So let me get this straight. I mean you're saying that there is there's there are more than one there is more than one map. Uh, I believe that there's there is actually more than one map, but Do you just play on the same map? There is only one map if that makes sense. There's only one arena. Yeah, yeah. But well, I mean, in the context, but of I an think arena, they're actually making like a three v three player map and things like that. But right, yeah, for, yeah. for 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 the, the time point being. we're making, yeah, it's the yeah, kind of it's game. It's map. the kind of game that if it was an RTS, that would drive very, very. Yeah, quickly. yeah, exactly. But uh, it seems to me that, uh, and it's very interesting. Like Dota as a game because I see it kind of organically 
Mm. It's a great. I mean, all games from the production. Well, point it's, of the, view, it's one of the most it's organic. organic it's, yeah. yeah, it's one of the most organic games because it didn't grow out of. Uh, uh, I think it's the first game I've ever come across that did not grow out of um, uh, a company saying this is a gap in the market. Let's make yeah. a game to fit that gap. It was a game that mutated into another game. Yeah, and precisely. then took on a life of its own. So, like, if you take Warcraft Three, which I think it mutated from, mm. people essentially took the hero element in Warcraft Three. Like you can play Arthas, or you can play one of the orc guys, yeah. one of the undead guys, one of the tree motherfuckers. And they eventually create yeah. creeps into, yeah. or like, uh, and like they relegated yeah. the what I think in Warcraft Three, unlike Starcraft, were definitely a far more important element of the game, the hero element. Mm. But they took that and, and and not only intensified it, but they seemed to relegate. The other, uh, ca- uh, the other kind of units See, the thing, to non-playable characters and make it more hero-oriented, which I is, find quite interesting. Starcraft has such a huge multiplayer fan yeah. base that the hero element is difficult to incorporate into a game that is played on that level and for that yeah, amount of money. Yeah, because it's things. played by the rules of RTS. So, I mean, the interesting you, you, thing about you've, Warcraft you've played, 3 is it was a synthesis of... You've played of Heart of the Swarm yourself. Yes. Um, so you'll know that in the single player... Fucking but, terrible at it, but yeah. Oh yeah, but, but in the single player... The hero element still persists, but uh, they, I know what you mean. They, but they have removed it from the multiplayer. But I'd say that StarCraft is a, whilst made by the same game makers, Blizzard. It's a completely different case. Um, but yeah, the the that's what I love about Dota is the fact that it was. I mean, I never I never played the uh, Dota one. Yeah. I started out playing these kind of games on Heroes of Nur, yeah. which was a community created. Mm. Pay twenty dollars now you get the better code yeah. and you get to play it until it's released yeah. and then you get a special account blah 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 that means Heroes of New Earth is Hon right I've heard of Hon that's right Hon yeah. yeah and that was uh, the main competitor along with League of Legends for people that previously play, played uh, Brood War mm. and these were were these Dota and Hon sorry uh, LOL and Hon were they originally not Brood War sorry I'm the Frozen Throne I think I'm LOL and Hon were they originally Dota, spawn, uh, Dota clones Yes, they are. Dota they originated clones. as yeah. Dota clones. I mean, and Dota Two is a Dota clone. Because what it's Blizzard actually, were but, but the being... difference is that Dota Two is actually made with or by Ice Frog, which yeah. was the creator of the original Warcraft Three mod. Right. And he, this is what's fantastic about Valve. Valve gave him a job. Mm. He said, "You're a great community modifier of games." Do you want to work for Valve, mm. the best gaming organization? I've, often said, in the I've world. often said that the Creative Assembly should take advantage of its modding community, which yeah. is amazing. I mean, I was saying it's the only game I can think of that has organically sprung from another game. I'd the see, other I'd one see, I think see, could sorry, be a did, thing. Just, just to make yeah. a quick point, I think that one thing that I do like about Creative Assembly is that whilst they maybe don't support their modding community mm. in the same way that Valve did with Counter Strike and things like that, yeah. all mods of the Half Life Two engine, Team Fortress, and all that kind of stuff. Um, that with things like the editor for Football Manager, with yeah. things like the massive modding communities for the Total War games, they maybe don't support them as much as Valve supports yeah. their modding community, but at least they don't fucking tarnish them and bastardize them like EA has done w- repeatedly mm. with their online communities, which is why EA are basically the only game that they have that even yeah. comes close to representing anything in a uh, competitive sense is probably Battlefield yeah. at just about. I don't know and what their classification is. FIFA. Like, yeah, FIFA is like... Exactly. But I, do, I can tell you... I don't even know what their FIFA classification as a company is, but they certainly behave... Heartless, like, yeah. soulless, That's fucking insane. Nazi yeah. corporation. Yeah. That's what They you certainly are. behave Sorry. like a corporate pile <laughs> yeah. of shit. Oh, well, they are. I mean, yeah. and I'm pretty, well, they're the biggest... Uh, because they utilize, or they capitalize, rather, on all these sports games. Mm. But also, I mean, the Creative Assembly is kind of true what you're saying, uh, what I think you might be getting at in the sense of the Creative Assembly, is that they don't openly support their modding community, but they leave the door open. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 they're you not, can they're interact not, with the game yeah. files quite openly, whereas other companies go... Through in, to, through insane to insane measures to prevent take it, insane yeah. measures to prevent any modification of the game. Which mm. I mean, I, I and, and the weird thing is it's it's motivated by this bullshit thing. Like I remember having a conversation with a lecturer, and I said, "How much would I have to digitally manipulate or 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 change a photograph or just a picture of anything mm. uh, to cease to violate the copyright?" Um, and and I think my lecture Alan was like fifteen layers, which means that you, you know you could add a layer of modification. And he was talking in the sense of um, 
of of Photoshop. Every modification in Photoshop counts as a layer. It's really strange because it's different Adobe from Paint.net, which is right. what I use. Uh, which is a very advanced release paint on it 4.0 check it out i might put it in the description but i won't just get type in get paint or paint.net into a google search engine either that or it'll come up with an actual so paint on net, i guess like some kind of bridge between photoshop and other freeware yeah well paint on net began as some uni student i, I think in brazil because i use i use like attempt the, to improve on ms paint yeah and it actually sprung into this full freeware hmm. uh community which where people will write in code and plugins is, along the .NET framework. It's not a website. .NET is like the you know you get .NET yeah, yeah. framework updates I, for I'm, no, I'm yeah saying. for, hey, for but, Windows. But is this is this based on the original Microsoft Paint programming? Yes, it initially was, and it has grown to something that is its complexity rivals photoshops now right and it's entirely free and it works on a donation system and and you, know, uh, you want to give a couple of quick any, paypal you can i'd be interested that. to know if there was any contention on the part of microsoft to them stopping that no because it's called paint.net so it's not like i mean they don't they haven't actually trademarked the word paint no can't do no it. of course no yeah, no yeah. But I, and i'm not I mean, playing that you're saying I mean, that the fact, i mean the fact that their their code was initially used oh no 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 he didn't use their code uh, right. Sorry, he used the .NET framework coding system. I yeah, think, yeah, which yeah. Is, is, I think it's. I don't think it's a full on coding language. I could be wrong. I don't know this stuff intimately, but .NET framework is the way what it's constructed around. He didn't take the initial code. He understood, uh, being a presumably a computer science student, for his final project uh, in university, he took. I think he might have been from Brazil. I can't remember, or maybe Eastern Europe. He took paint. MS Paint. He looked at it and said, I will just reconstruct in the .NET framework uh, uh, language something mm. similar to this and b present this as my final project and say, here's my own little image manipulator Yeah, yeah. along ah. the lines of Microsoft Paint. So he didn't directly take their code, right, okay. but he said, I can slightly but improve on Microsoft like sort of Paint. Maybe their user interface and yeah. things like that. He said oh, well, XP, well, I say manipulate, yeah. I mean copy in the way that it's like, well, he, he, yeah, it's he, going to be intelligible yeah. to users. That but, I mean, used, MS, yeah. Paint, MS Paint was a rip-off of like early Photoshop and other stuff. Like sure, that. yeah. Um, and I so mean, what every, he did is he says, is, I'll yeah. make something that's about as complex as Microsoft Paint. And I don't know if the initial intention was to improve upon it, but it definitely was to make something along the lines of it. Mm. And because of the way he structured it in terms of freeware, it means people can write coded plugins. Um, and eventually, so you write a plugin that maybe, for example, like the other day I downloaded an, align, an alignment plugin, mm. which means when you put a, an image on the canvas, it's really useful not to try and count pixels, to try and make sure it's right in the center. Yeah, yeah. You're placing okay, it on the yeah. canvas. And... Um, there's a little alignment plugin you can download that's like 12 kilobytes. Uh, that's and literally just, a command. It's just move this to what is mathematically the center of this whatever sized canvas. Yeah. And uh, eventually, over time, they don't have the alignment thing in yet, and they just released the 4.0. 4 and this thing's been out for years, but each one it extends in like increments. Like the last one, I think, was like 3.16, which means they released 16 versions of MS, uh, of Paint.net 3. Mm. Uh, which I find amazing, like the amount of uh, updates that are done. I think they're done roughly every couple of months, and there's a new one about every year and a half. So, so uh, the user, so the user community produces these plugins, and then the best of the best are kind of incorporated mm -hmm. into the next yes, official. Yes, they literally patch like the Borg, yeah. like the Borg. They ah. it, they integrate them into the collective. Yeah, it's this power of the internet that is just unrivaled anywhere. I think in human history, I mean, Definitely. this ability to yeah. just take building blocks and put them together and make them stronger and stronger and improve upon them and i just look at um photoshop and people say i wish i could afford photoshop and it's like man i can do things that people that have photoshop can't do which mm. is not something i would have even been able to say uh have been able to say 12 months ago i mean almost entirely almost entirely self-taught and uh you know the college course just amplifies that it means i can learn more and more but i learned all of that in a free program that's about 20 megabytes in size photoshop is about i think photoshop 6 from uh, CS6 is, I think, the better part of a gig. Could be between 700, 800 megabytes. I don't entirely know. I know that CS2 is at least 400 megabytes. Uh, so you, maybe if you count the interface and also hardware acceleration, like you have to have a half decent processor to run it. Mm. I think for at least um, CS2, it was like a, a Pentium 4, which for 2005, not everyone had a Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if it's a 2.4 they ask for, which is in the gigahertz and is a single core. But I mean, it's clunkier, 
it's very expensive and it has a steep learning curve because it offers features that yeah paint.net doesn't offer but paint.net offers 90 percent i i still have some cider left paint.net offers 90 percent of what photoshop has at at no cost at all and a and a a freeware uh freeware donation based system which i think is a lot stronger it's just you and me now laurie's away to get a drink hmm we have been drinking for several hours, which explains um, maybe. We go, Laurie, do you think it explains the fact that we've been drinking for several hours? Probably explains the kind of off the cuff nature of the podcast so far. No reply. Great Beatles song. An awkward silence ensued. So anyway, you should grab Paint on it because it's incredibly fantastic. And it's fairly easy to use, man. If you've ever, um, ever been interested in a little bit of digital photography or digital image manipulation, which is a little more of a mouthful, um, you should totally check it out. I may link it in the linkage below, but I will probably not because I'll probably forget that this was in the podcast. Um, I don't even know what happened like 20 minutes ago, frankly. We should check it out. It's great. Another program I'm thinking of is, um, well, if you want to record anything, Audacity is great, you know, also completely free, I think, operates on a donation system. If you were to violate certain copyright laws, you might also try DVD Video Soft, which is all one word, DVD Video Soft, um, S-O-F-T, which is a, a suite of programs that allow you to rip audio from YouTube videos, you don't need to use those horrible browser website ones, you know, where you do it that way and it takes three years and people are trying to sell you fucking loop, you know, and Taiwanese wives and shit like that. Um, see, I use a system, if you guys do record, uh, anyone that's listening to this that wants to record or maybe you want to record some music, I mean, it's completely applicable. You can use Audacity for that too, but if you want to do multi-track recording, Audacity doesn't actually support that. Uh, so if you do want to do multi-track recording, if you have two, more than one thing being recorded at the same time, let's say you have a set of microphones, one for the drums, one for the guitar, or one for your um, your voice, maybe, for singing, use Crystal, which is... Spelt like the cheap liquor, uh, you know, K R Y S T A L, Crystal, um, which we're actually using to record this, which is fantastic. You're still with us at this point. I think 40% of all YouTube's traffic is now mobile, so if you're not listening to these longer filler episodes on mobile, you should totally be listening to them at this point on mobile. That made any sense, um, whatsoever. I, I think with iPods, they make it more awkward awkward with Android stuff where you can't turn off the screen without eliminating the fucking audio but definitely with iPods one of the things I prefer is um, the fact that you can turn off the screen then you double tap the central button or iPhones for that matter and you can continue playing the audio I don't know why given its insane level of accessibility Android does not allow you to turn off your screen and continue listening to what you're watching or Which is YouTube. a big thing for me, man. I listen to a they lot of uh, longer Hitchens videos. Older, yeah, man. Android used to. Uh, older, older versions when you were using either the web browser or the YouTube app. Yeah, it's to do you with can... people listening to music and not buying it. Precisely, man. they've actually they've actually disabled it. So yeah, so people's yeah. Rihanna fucking music videos are the reason I can't listen to Hitchens. Given our long discussion about Orwell, <sighs> fucking right. Fuck these people, man. So, so when you Apparently do, there's a way to jailbreak use... the Android stuff. I've just not got around to doing it yet. I guess the alternative is that you go into a YouTube converter, download the video, and then convert it into an MP3. Yeah, which, which crushes the accessibility. I mean, sure, but it's just, it's just. I, I agree with you. It's mm. just stupid, but for, I don't know how. But somehow I managed to freeze that beer, which was kind of annoying. So uh, that's gonna suck. How many one. other ones are in there? Uh, just that one. Right. Well, well, Hurry yeah, up, just, Laurie, people just, are dying. I know, but my beer's frozen. Yeah. And I can't fucking deal with it. Mm. I'm saying to Life the. Is uh, hard. As as Tom Denham said famously, I think for this podcast anyway, um, me and Laurie, me and Laurie, me and Kelly, no, me and Greg, rather, and Matty, but Matty I think was taking a shit or whatever the fuck at the flat a couple of years ago. Denham had stayed quiet for about twenty minutes. I can't remember what we were talking about, like Thatcher or some shit. It was a very old podcast. I don't even know if it exists anymore. 
Um, and it's the one that had Deadlock randomly halfway through it. Oh, I think uh, I watched that. It was like, Thatcher, fucking Thatcher. And then I was like, that's my Matty impersonation. All right. Um, <laughs> it's his gun gangs, right? And now uh, basically... Because he's a fucking dead. He's a fucking... He's a blast. <laughs> Matty's he's so funny. No, I'm joking. I miss Matty. I miss Matty. It's you don't pay- need to worry about him listening uh, yeah. to though, cause Man, I visit his grave from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Masturbate over it during the night. You know, it's a pity he died in that fire. But no, nah, no, nah, I miss Matty. Anyway, Matty's away taking a shit, I think. And we had, t- we had Denim on the podcast. And Denim hadn't said a thing. But he was just sitting there drinking tinny after tinny. And me and Greg were like... Look at each other as if to say, when denim starts up, some shit's going to go down. Some and racism is yeah, about to happen. Yeah, <laughs> and you always, you almost hope. I kind of like having right wing conversations with middle aged men. I like casual racism. I don't, not personally necessarily, but I just, I like those kinds of people that are just not PC at all. Yeah, yeah. They're just yeah. so fun to have conversations with. You know, um, and uh, they're willing, know, they're willing to tell you something that you don't want to hear because yeah. they don't fucking care, and that's exactly. the best kind of.